Mr. Crispin here once again and hello to the viewers. Now today I'm doing a bit of compound angle drilling on my cylinder blocks and I thought I'd do a little explanation video. Now I'm only a beginner but I have a few thoughts on the matter and I'm going to share them with you today. Uh, now for the benefit of anyone new to the topic we'll start with the very basics. So what am I doing here? Well good question. In terms of cylinder blocks I am producing a hole that goes from the centre line of this bore at an angle and meets the end of this hole and uh, to help me explain here's one I did earlier uh, you can see there that that hole goes in at an angle and intersects the end of that hole okay now this component's datum is this corner and it sits at 90 degrees 90 degrees and 90 degrees as we look at it this hole however intersects with none of those angles and is on a totally different line to any of those axes um, and that to my mind is what makes it a compound angle. If I was coming straight down on it I'd call that a perpendicular hole. If it was just a hole in one angle I'd call that an angled hole but because it's an angle in two different planes I'm calling it a compound angle. So that's what uh, I'm doing and uh, the question is how do we produce a hole that starts and finishes in the right place? So to do this I'm going to divide the method into three steps. Step number one is going to be to pick a start point and an end point for the hole. Once you've got a start point and an end point, you've then got a whole axis, and that axis can give you the angles you need to work to. Once I've got those angles, I can think through how I'm going to actually machine this. Am I going to swivel ahead? Am I going to put it on a sign table? Am I going to use a universal dividing head? How am I going to position the component and the spindle to get the hole? And having done that, I can move on to step number three, which is to position the spindle relative to the component. So having got the spindle and the whole axis parallel but not in line, I then need to make a positional move to somehow line the two up. So I mentioned start and end points being an early consideration, and these would come entirely from the drawing. So you'd take a start and an end point as viewed down there and you would take a start and an end point as viewed down there and that would describe the axis of that hole you've got to produce. Now I mentioned viewing from different angles because in compound angle work that's one of the most important factors depending on the order in which you take the views and the views you take um, you can arrive at different answers. Now um, I'm going to get stuck in and if you can manage the next couple of minutes of this you should be fine and understand the rest of the video. I'm going to start by saying that in manual machining and manual inspection there are two main ways to achieve a compound angle. The first is to use a compound sign table whereby you can tip and tip and let's imagine you're the spindle and I'm going to get this whole axis in line. I would tip and then tip roughly speaking. The alternative method to do this is to rotate and tip. So I would rotate the component until one of the angles is out and then I would tip it to get the second angle out. And um, in terms of demonstrating a compound sign table I'm actually off the hook because I haven't got one. So I'm going to be using a rotate and tip method. But for both these methods there are formulas that exist that allow you to use the dimensions as viewed end on and side on and arrive at what we call corrected angles to um, achieve the finished result. Now why do I say corrected angles because when you start compounding angles the two angles have an effect on each other. If you're going to go down the formula route they normally start off something like this so uh, you have a start point and an end point and you put in your um, whole axis and then you say okay viewing from this side it's a whatever angle viewing from the other side it's a whatever angle and then you use the formula to give you your corrected angles. I'm going to do this in a, what I'd call more of a shop floor method that I've thought up. I'm going to um, use the rotate and tip method. I'm going to take you through one angle at a time and I'll show you the factors that apply to it and um, share your thoughts if you're a compound angle expert. Hopefully we get to the right result. I look forward to reading any comments. Now to actually machine this I'm going to rotate the component to get the first angle out and then tip the spindle to get the second angle out. That will give me my two angles and it will be by the rotate and tip method. 
The first angle is not difficult, it's straight down the bore as viewed and uh, all we have to do is consider the start point and end point and construct an angle from there. Start point on the centre line of the bore, end point is uh, just somewhere I've picked, it's in line with the top of the parallel portion and on the centre line and using the drawing between those two points I can construct a triangle that um, gives me a right angle uh, corner and uh, an angle and if I zoom out I've actually documented that triangle up here so 165 thou along the bottom 134 thou that gives me an angle of 39.1 degrees so our first angle as viewed straight on is 39.1 degrees with my first angle calculated to be 39.1 I can rotate the component by that amount and in doing so put the start and finish line of the hole in line with the machine's axis. That allows me then to consider the second angle in its own right. So in other words I can visualise a plane or cross section through at this whole angle and then just consider how far I need to tip the spindle to get it. That will look something like this. So because we've taken the first angle out in its entirety all we need to do is worry about the second angle viewed from here. So how do we find this angle? Well basically we need another triangle. It needs to be a triangle in line with this whole centre line and it needs to run from the start point to the end point. Well it turns out we've already found that because if we think back to the triangle I created from the first view it had a hypotenuse of 212 thou. If we think back to this view and what's actually going on we already have an angle that runs from the uh, start point to the end point at 39.1. So that hypotenuse becomes the base length for the vertical triangle. We also know from our uh, drawing sketch that the distance between here and here was 56 thou. So if we consider our base leg to be 212 long, and the vertical leg to be 56 thou, we can uh, use trigonometry to give us an angle and that is the angle at which we must drill when viewed at that cross section. To set these angles I'm going to be using a sine bar but I'm going to get as close as possible first by using the protractor on the head and an uh, angle protractor to set the vise. So hopefully you're familiar with the sign bar method. I'm using a uh, set of slip gauges to construct a triangle and this gives me the angle that I need to be set at. And I'm then tramming the quill axis in using an indicator. Now just a little pointer here, this is a geared head machine and uh, as typical with this style of machine there's no spindle lock. The closest you can get to a spindle lock is to put the machine in its lowest gear um, and that's really solid but you've still got the backlash within the gear train to contend with. See how I can move that? The way I overcome this on such a machine is to hang the uh, indicator over the back of centre so that gravity naturally takes it to get rid of the backlash and uh, I can check that that repeats to zero every time and that's fine. The vice angle has also been set with a sign bar and I'm about ready to proceed. With the spindle and vice now set we have our angles sorted so earlier we had a spindle over here and a hole somewhere else we have now got the spindle axis and the whole axis parallel what remains is to align one to the other so that when we drill our hole it goes in on the right position now normally positioning a spindle is not uh, that difficult if you have your component at a nice square angle and your spindle vertical you could use an edge finder or a clock a borer or clock something else up to um, locate your spindle. Slightly trickier at this angle because not only is the component swivelled round, the spindle is obviously swivelled so the normal edge finder goes out of the window really. As a result then we need a different solution and I'm going to introduce you here to the um, common compound angle topic of tooling balls. So I've turned up a little aluminium plug that just fits in the bore and into that reamed hole goes a thing called a tooling ball. And in compound angle work, a tooling ball is your friend because it allows you to construct geometry on the machine that can be picked up at any angle with the spindle as I'm about to demonstrate. But the geometry it's actually created 
is shown here. Component in black, aluminium plug in green and tooling ball in red. It has naturally given us the centre line of the ball, which is a good datum. And this top face can be located because I've made this an accurate distance to give us an overall accurate distance of 30 millimeters. So I'm now going to show you how you find this with the spindle and we can then calculate from there how to get from the center of this ball to the hole position. A uh, clock into the spindle and we are going to pick up on the center of that tooling ball. So to get things going here I'm going to set it roughly by eye to be sweeping about the right radius and then I'm going to bring it a bit closer to the component so that's better and what we're going to do now is fine tune it so first of all I'd like the sweep of the clock to be roughly on the centre line of the ball as close as I get it by eye um, and once I've adjusted that by moving the table I'm going to lock the table and that will be the end of any x-axis movement everything now will be z and y so I've got you at a more interesting angle and we are almost zero on that side almost zero on this side so what we do now is bring it to the top and adjust the table height until we read zero overall we should now be much closer and we go around here, ok I'm on plus half a thousand plus half a thousand and zero, I can just adjust that so the spindle is now intersecting the centre of that ball but we're about to make a positional move and if we're going to make a positional move we need to bear in mind backlash so what I'm going to do is pull it round to this side because I'm about to move in that direction I'm going to, uh, yeah, so we're on zero I'm going to wind the table away from the ball see the clocks come away and then I'm going to wind back to it until we get back to the zero a bit much clock loading actually for my liking but there we are um, so we're now back on zero we're still on the centre line of the ball but the backlash has been taken out in the direction we're about to travel I'm going to make sure the same is the case for the Z and then we'll make our positional move so we have rotated the component in the vise until we have got this whole centre line parallel with the machine's X axis we've then found the centre of this ball and that has given us enough information to make our positional move in the Y axis I'm going to construct a right angle triangle here we know the angle from our earlier investigations and we know the length of the hypotenuse because it's the radius of the ball with all that calculated we can get this side of the triangle which is the amount I've got to move the machine to get from the ball centre to the whole centre line so with the Y axis set all that remains is to set the table height we have our spindle centred over the ball all we need to do is raise the table until it comes in line with this red centre line now to do this I constructed a triangle that ran from the start point of the hole outwards to the bore centre line and then I have deducted from the 1.181 this distance which is the short side of the triangle minus the 100 thou we came in that will put your spindle on the red centre line and you can drill in the question is how far is this and uh, if you do what I did the first time round you'll be mistaken in thinking that that is the radius of the bore as we look at this um, the radius of the bore would be correct if we were viewing directly down on it but we've rotated this 39.1 and as you may see here the whole start point has now come inboard and closer to the center than the actual radius but uh, do not panic uh, we have already worked that distance out this distance is in fact exactly the same as the distance we moved in the Y axis and uh, so that's fine use that dimension for your triangle base and uh, you should arrive at the right conclusion So we're in position and here comes the most important detail of this operation. Now that we've got our hole axis and our spindle axis aligned, 
the only thing that may move is the quill because the quill moves in and out on that same axis if we move x y or z to try and drill our hole we're going to end up out of position now if you were trying to mill a slot perhaps that's what you'd do but for hole drilling we must only move the quill so i'm about ready to drill And that's it, we have broken through. Bit of run out on this collet holder. So hopefully you can see what happened there. You always get some interesting geometry when drilling into a curved surface on an angle, but we will um, have this extracted and have a look at it. So you can see there, we've come in on on the centre line and we have broken through at that angle to produce our hole see it in the back there so there we are hopefully that was at least clear in some parts and uh, if you're one of the three people in the world who's still watching well done you can go and tell your wife what an interesting video it was now uh, hopefully you recognize the three steps i mentioned at the beginning as we went along define the start and end point define how you're going to set the machine up and then locate the spindle relative to the hole. They're the three steps. If you can work out how to do them, you should be well on your way. Now for all the loco nuts out there, uh, don't panic. I am working on the next series. It will be called Pistons, Rods and Bobbins and it will show the machining of the main pistons, the valve bobbins, the piston rods and the bobbin spindles. So uh, that will be coming out. I'm working on that now. I hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video.